Hi, everybody. I'm Nora Goldschlager, talking to you from San Francisco, without a mask, by the way. And I thought because of the times that we're in, that a serious talk was not a good idea. So over the years, I've collected some stuff that I'm going to show you that really are, when you think about it, EP rhythms that weren't. But as a clinical cardiologist, as a clinical cardiologist, everything comes to me. What should we do? Should we get a pacemaker? Should we call EP? What should we do? So I'm going to share these with you. Some of you may recognize a lot of them. Some of you may recognize very few because we've been there first. But let's see what we've got. So first of all, as you can see, somebody has written here, VTAC and VFib. This was a code that was called. This is a 12 lead. Some of you will recognize the machine, which is neither here nor there. But this is a 12 lead ECG with everything labeled. And the code was called on this very rapid, no integrity kinds of complexes. I have no idea why the code was called because when we got there it was about 40 seconds later, the guy's propped up in his bed reading his little book. So he was fine. His blood pressure was fine. His color was good. He certainly was not coded. What were they reading? Could have been a computer. It could have been the central station, but what they were thinking they were reading was what later we discussed was not polymorphic VT. But that is what the code was called for. So we made quick work of this. We put it in the chart, addended, but we uh, broke the code. We, we didn't have to be bothered with it. And <clears throat> pardon me, what you can plainly see are QRS complexes in here. They're not particularly regular, but fine. They're not regular, but they do have integrity. Whereas here, there's a lot of noise. And here, there's this polymorphic VT, where upstairs looks like atrial fibrillation. So if you don't have consistent stuff in your tracing, something is likely to be wrong with your tracing. So that was code number one that wasn't. Here's code number two that wasn't. This is really embarrassing. This is a continuous strip taken in our emergency room. And it was a patient clearly, it's not quite continuous, but uh, you'll recognize the older machines. It broke at the end of the page and then began to record again. Clearly the patient is in sinus rhythm. Clearly the patient doesn't have a STEMI, but clearly there is noise in the baseline pseudo flutter, pseudo fib, nature of which is there. And then this, another non polymorphic VT. The problem with this being a polymorphic VT is that if you caliper measure, unless your eyesight is really good, your caliper measure, your QRS complex interval, rate, millisecond, doesn't matter and bring it down here, there it is. Okay, so there is a spike or a notch on a T wave, shouldn't be there. And it could be any part of the QRS complex. So that's number two, and a code was called here, which is pretty amazing because it didn't last very long. And nobody looked at the patient. If you don't look at the patient, you're really gonna miss information, but we, and you get these strips that the house staff will bring you. Some of them are two inches, great. Some of them are one channel, great. They should be onset and offset. As you can see here at least, that will allow you to make sense of the rhythm. But house staff, trainees, fellows, including EP fellows, they'll bring you a couple of inches. What do you think of this rhythm? That's not gonna work. Anything you need to know, onset and offset. And if you can get a rate trend, that's even better because you can see the jump in the rates and the fall in the rates if they're there. So here is code number three, which is being misread by the computer as ventricular tachycardia 
or what is this? And by the way, you all know, and we have to learn, know your machine's characters, know what the V is, know what the P is, know what the question mark is, know what the letters stand for, because this is obviously an overcounted piece of nonsense. And this looking, this is not even counted at all. So know what your uh, bedside and ECG machine, if they designate, how they are designating. And this was felt to be by medical, not nursing personnel, who came into the room, looked at the screen, not the patient, looked at the screen, oh my God, call a code. And then somebody looked at the patient. I'd love to say that I walked in the room, but that wasn't actually the case. So this is not a monomorphic VT that comes and goes, sometimes goes away entirely. This is garbage. Now, I don't know what's causing it. I could theorize that chest physical therapy caused it. But not being there or seeing what other machines are around the patient, you may not know. The Munchausen, depending on the city you're working in, or the county or whatever. The Munchausen syndrome has done something like this and it won't project, but if you take your two hands and do this to yourself, depending on where you can create one of these pseudo tachyarrhythmias and fool the hell out of the medical profession. And we've seen cases like this and perhaps you have too. That'd be great to write up by the way. Ventricular run. Now this is from a monitoring strip, but what's happening here is not a ventricular run, it's more garbage. These may be QRSs, but they have no integrity. They have really, except for possibly this one, there's no integrity to anything. More to the fact is there's these pauses. Now the pauses are associated with the garbage. So the pauses are almost certainly not real. A flat line after the movie, for those of you who remember, is not usually a flat line. It has some movement to it. This is pretty flat line. So there's a disconnect, suggests a disconnect of your electrodes. And this would be a reconnect in a kind of a um, haphazard way to give you a pattern. But what it is not is Brady Tacky. It's not VT, it's not a pause. And this, so many of these complexes really have no integrity. Like, if that's a QRS, what is this? See, so if it doesn't make sense, it's probably on the machine. That was not well stated. It's the machine's issue. It's not the patient's issue. And here is another uh, minimum heart rate of 11 beats per minute. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, many of you know from your monitoring uh, days or now is that looking at all channels available is a pretty smart thing to do. So if somebody would bring you this flattish line, this flattish line, what could you think? Well, we have complete AV block. These are all P waves. We have complete AV block. Or we have a systole with garbage. Well, that's not going to be right because these are three simultaneous, simultaneously recorded uh, leads. And the rhythm is sinus. The rhythm is not a flat line. The rhythm is not complete hard block because the rhythm is sinus. And the tracings are simultaneous. Now, how do I know absolutely that these are not P waves? because they time with the QRSs, right on time with the QRSs. And there's nothing visible up here to go along with the P waves that we do see. So use your information and don't believe what's written until you can actually see what's written. Trust nobody. Four and a half seconds, pause. 
That's not right either. I mean, it sure looks like a pause, but look what's happened before. What's happened before is a shortening of the PR, QRS, QT duration. So something has stopped the presses, if you would. It's um, a mistake on the part of the recording apparatus. What it has done is narrow itself because the paper isn't flowing through the system correctly. So you have a PR, which goes away, it is, what is it, 80 milliseconds? You have a QRS duration, which is 50 milliseconds, something like that. And you have a T wave, which has gone from this to something like 80 milliseconds. It doesn't make sense, okay? And in the bottom strip, which is also simultaneously recorded, we have nothing. Not only do we start with nothing, we are ending up with complexes that are not consistently there and having the same durations, okay? So when you look at the onset and offsets of rhythms, you also wanna look at the onsets and offsets of anything that's disturbing, including a pause, a pseudo pause. Uh, maybe we'll, I don't think you're gonna see this very well. This was a transplant. We're not gonna go to transplant. because It's not really an artifact. So we'll go to something better. At least that transplant was a real transplant. So here is another example of a rhythm, which is a stable rhythm, looks like sinus rhythm, except where there is a flat line, absolutely flat. No hovering, no movement of any kind that you might expect with a breath. Absolutely flat line, and that's a disconnect. And it disconnects at various times in the PQRS cycles. Like, what happened to this T wave here? What is this? This is a T wave of the prior beat. What's going on? What is this complex? Again, absolutely flat line with some waveforms in here which you can't identify and are inconsistent is likely um, machine related and most likely in our uh, experience, I would say, is reflective of a disconnect. And this is also possible. Sometimes you have to have the pay, go to the patient and say, what were you just doing? Oh, I was brushing my teeth. Oh, I, it, was, it was itching, it was itching under my electrode wouldn't be up here anyway. I was itching under my electrode and I was fooling with it. So they'll give you a little history which allows you to know that. And it's always interesting to put that in your record somewhere annotated so that the next guy who comes down the street doesn't make the same mistake. Another totally false couple of rhythm strips which again, the computer, if you look at the computer read and not the ECG itself and not the patient, you're going to get it wrong because the computer is reading multiform premature beats and runs of ventricular premature beats. Here, it reads ventricular tachycardia. Call the code. This is not, it's too artificial. Everything is too narrow and too flat. Human beings do not behave like that. VFib, VTAC, that is what the computer reads, gives you a heart rate. The underlying atrial rhythm is not clear from this. And then we have this very wide, I would tell you everybody missed this except some people, very wide complex uh, appearing rhythm. Now, what's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with it is, again, if you have QRS complexes, which are defined and can be measured, you will find that they go right on through this wide complex tachycardia. Right on through. So the patient has a rhythm but this is not it. 
okay? This is not uncommon with scratching an area. This is not uncommon um, with, uh, well, what could we say? Scratching an area or actually fiddling with the electrode, knowingly fiddling with the electrode. The other thing that uh, this is not, by the way, is if you have just a little piece of this, you don't activate your cath lab for a STEMI. That's been done too. Not by anybody in the audience here, of course, but it's been done. This is machinery next to the patient. So be careful because somebody is going to look at this, miss an actual P wave, these are simultaneous, miss the P wave and call it atrial flutter or even atrial fib, depending on the regularity of the QRSs and the morphology of these distals. Now, very often the patient has so many lines and so many tubes and dialysis machines and all kinds of physically, uh, physical machines that are capable of generating electrical signals that will be picked up by your recording equipment. It's very hard to get um, because so much of the information is proprietary. It's hard to get what could be using this. And very often, you got to be there when the machine is working to really know. And most of the time, you're, you're actually not. But uh, some of these patients are just too sick to turn everything off and see, okay, what could be causing that? We don't want to do that. Again, look where the data are good and the data are good in this lead three, but not one and two. The only thing that's really upright about this are these numbers, 509, 907. Everything else is a mess, but once again, we have, this is a typical strip where you're sitting in rounds with a bunch of people that you're really trying to teach something to, and they run in, What? What? What's this? What just happened here? And you look and say, well, I'll tell you what just happened. How do you know that so good? Because you've brought these kinds of things to me before. So whereas the baseline may really look like nothing, you have three cycles that are good enough to measure. And once again, you are having a rhythm that is marching through. If it marches through, that baseline wander is not your rhythm. The final disconnect, this one, bed alarms. It gives no heart rate because there's nothing to record. Okay, so this patient who has a QRS, he's alive, he's probably well, but this is all electrical stuff. It's very high frequency electrical stuff. So if you don't want to throw it out or keep it for your files, uh, you know it's electrical stuff. In this example too, the integrity of the complexes is getting lost. So the QRS is lower in amplitude. The T wave is less in amplitude. The intervals are changing until finally it goes away and then it comes back in the same way, not as much integrity and then some integrity. Okay, but if somebody is going to bring you this and just this, you will be asked to see this patient with paroxysmal complete AV block. What do we think about this? Well, this is another one of these. Where this, this is a pretty good one, but again, if you gestalt this whole thing, what you can see, absent all the Vs, is that how can that be a QRS and that be a QRS? It's too short. So once again, your basic measurement, you can do this, will come through. Even if you can't get it in some places, you will get it in other places, like there. So there's your giveaway. So anything that's funny looking, that's spiky looking like that, that's what your complex is. I think we're getting a certain message here. 
another issue of integrity to disconnect, to reconnect, to loss of, and then regain of integrity. This was actually read as U waves, wide complex with U waves. What I think this is, no proof, but what I think this is, is that these electrodes were placed over a pulsation. So either at the wrist or at the ankle, something where a pulse created this kind of stimulus artifact. The systolic event is here. The actual arterial pulse is this, whoops, is that. This was amazing. And obviously when you get over to something you can read, that's no ST elevation. And that is not a U-wave either. This looks pretty good. And for my final slide, I just want to illustrate a caution. Uh, we were getting calls about heart rate and PVC counts that didn't look right. Now, what the machine was doing, and this is where you have to know your lettering, it was counting P waves and QRSs and what they're calling V waves incorrectly. So what they did get was N is their designation of normal, but the V indicator was actually picking up a P wave. A is an atrial event. What's going on? Well, what's going on is that the amplitude in the machine uh, that is the, seen by the machine, the amplitude of the P wave is such that it is too high to be recognized as an atrial event. Now, you won't see that on surface, but you can figure out what's going on. The amplitude of this P wave is being called a V because it is not sufficiently of a different amplitude from the true normal or the A. So there was PVC overcounting. And the diagnosis of this man's Brady arrhythmia was missed because the heart rate was given by the machine as 80. So until you walked in and actually looked at this thing and said, this is not right. This is why one has to not trust what is printed. Obviously look at the patient and know the designations of the machines and how to fix them. And all we did here was to get a different position that would discriminate between A and QRS, a premature ventricular. So that is my better part of my collections of artifacts. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was a pleasure being here. And I thank you very much for your attention.